And uh, let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ord, folks. And don't forget, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord-Oracle.com. That's Ord-Oracle.com. And if you've been following Tim, uh, you know, as these interviews have been taking place, the bottom line, you know, we'll let him uh, give us an update. But the bottom line is that I think that sign of strength coming off the bottom, I think we got some action out here. Tim Ord, yeah, what's going do. on? Yeah. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? No, oh, good, 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 good. I, I sent over a bunch of charts, maybe too many, but... No, there's not know, we'll too many, man. Uh, listen, man, after, you know, the last time we had talked and, you, you know, you felt, you said specifically, I think it's here, I think it's right here. And sure enough, the next day, man, bang, we had that sign of strength in the S&P, man. It was pretty cool. Right. Well, actually, we can... We got some charts kind of leading up to this, but maybe we can just go to that sign of strength chart that... Uh, okay. um, Let's, let's do that first. It's just, it's, 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 for, for right now, let's say this bicycle is legitimate. Yes. So, um, what chart could, was that, Tim? What number? Yeah, you go to chart four. Four, okay. One, two, three, four. I got it. Okay, cool. All right. So, it, we can go back, you know, if we got time, we'll go back and how we create this signal. But yep. say the signal that was created is a, a right signal. Well, anyhow, the, the whole thing depends on this rally you get panic and you have to get a sign of strength uh you can do that on a bigger time frames and use mccall and square and summation index you can also do it on a, a shorter time frame and what we're looking at is a shorter time frame so what i use for that is a zwag breast thrust yes we talked about that before yeah and so this is is more of a shorter term type thing because you got to have you know uh a selling climax, I guess, uh, and the Zweig breath thrust indicator needs to get below 0.4. Okay. And it did It did that first part of October, and uh, all those red lines going back to, to 2020 are the times when that indicator actually got below minus 20. And there are some other ones in there, but they didn't have a sign of strength. Now, I'll, I'll explain that in a second. But anyhow, you need a uh, you need a sign of weakness, and right after that, you need a sign of strength within ten days, and a sign of strength on the Zwag breast thrust indicator. Uh, so you need to go below point four, then within ten days you need to go above point six. Okay. And and, uh, and this is all to do that indicator is the uh, NYSE advancing issues uh, times the. Um, total issues and that's a 10-day average okay so that's that's the zwag breath thrust so that indicator needs to go below 0.4 yeah. up to 0.6 within 10 days so uh i sent this chart over uh it got below um point i didn't write that date down um on tonight's reports on actually i wrote down the date and this one i didn't but we did have it here over the last i think it was last um uh, Thursday. No, you were on Thursday. Uh, we you were talking about a Thursday, and then we got the sign of strength on Friday. Yes. Right, sign of strength on Friday. Yep. And uh, they got point four nine as of uh, today. We're at point uh, point five four. Needs to get point six zero by next Thursday. Oh, that's cool so, to know. Okay, yeah. Let yeah. me get this straight. That's so, really freaking cool. Okay. Yeah, it could it could happen today. Uh, I don't know what the number is going to be today, but this doesn't update until after the close. But it's got all the way till next Thursday. So in general, this rally has to have uh, advanced decline pretty strong over a ten day period for this zwag breath thrust indicator to trigger. And I've triggered you know that big bottom we had back in starting April of 2022 to April of 2023. Yes. We had actually three uh, Zwag breath thrust indicators. You know, the red line is a uh, selling climax and the blue line is a buying climax. Yeah. And you had three in that time frame. So that was a good indication that the market was building a bullish bottom, not a bullish top. Right. And it's one of the reasons why I kind of remained bullish. And also there's some other stuff too, but we're not, we're not talking about the other stuff. We're talking about this is a wag breast thrust indicator. So anyhow, we got till next Thursday for this indicator to get point point six or above. If it does, you can have short term consolidations, but basically you have to remain bullish. Um, you know, sometimes they pull back, sometimes they don't. So we'll have to wait yeah. and see. But that 
Bobby Ford at 4,200 is not going to be broken. So, um, pretty cool. He man. can, but that's, that's probably strong support, and it hit pretty much on the money. So we're we're starting, uh, I think, a rally that probably could last a year in. Well, so you know, you know, it's amazing, Tim. Right? Th think about this for a second. Right? That you had the sign of strength on Friday, and then yep. you have over the weekend Hamas, you know, attacking Israel. And the S&P is just shaking off. I mean, that, that's, I mean, the markets are deviant, but that said quite a bit also, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's what normally is bearish turns out to be bullish. Yes. You know, the, the sign of strength tells the story. So this market, um, especially if you get to point six, wants to go up. I know. Um, so, I know. So we're, we're not. And that, so let's, let's, let's flip to another chart. Let's oh. flip to chart five. Five, okay. Let me just, one, two, uh, three, four. Five, six. Okay, I have it. Yep. All right. All right. So th this is a monthly chart. Yes. And I think we showed this in four, and I was talking about 420 as being support. And the reason why that's kind of a, uh, a support line, which is basically the previous highs of, of April yes. 2022 right. to April 2023, it kind of hit that top area and that found support. What I'm thinking is happening here is the head and shoulders uh, bottoms forming. The left shoulder formed in late 2021, uh, early 2022, up yeah. around that 442 yeah. to 446. Right. And I'm thinking we're forming the right shoulder right now. And uh, the whole thing is is breaking of that neckline. The neckline comes in around 4600. So if we had a sign of strength through that 4600, then this head and shoulders bottom, you, you take the bottom of the head up to the neckline, and you add that onto the neckline, you come up with 5,700. I know, it's well, a 50, huge head and shoulders, man. <laughs> yeah, well, this, this is all conjecture right now. Oh, yeah, now, no, no, but, for uh, sure. This I is get what it. I'm looking on the bigger picture. That's right. So, but, you know, 5,700 from where we are right now is 30% higher. Right, right. So yeah, no. That, listen, that's a it's, long ways up. It's it's pretty intense. I I I, I can see that too. I mean, because you know, even the yeah, man, because it's it's pretty. It's actually pretty pretty. P r e t t y. This this formation here, it really is. So I see here. Let me pull this over here. One second. I'm gonna pull that over for the audience so they can actually see what you're looking at. I mean, that's about as clean as you can get, man. Look at this thing. Actually, I'll bring yeah. it back. Uh, let's see. I don't need it that far. Bring it back there. You can kind of see this. I mean, that's pretty laid out, man. It really is. Yeah. Well, if you also, if you know, if you take the, the bottom of the COVID crash back in March 2020. Yes. And you go to the high of, uh, you know, 2022. Yeah. You only did a 50% retracement. I know. I know. I know. So. Stay right there, folks. So. Tim and I are going to be coming right back. Um you can reach Tim at odd-oracle.com. It's odd-oracle.com. Uh, we have the Dow. The Dow is up 140 right now. NASDAQ's up 101. S&P's up 26. We'll come right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Oyd, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow. Industrial's up 132. NASDAQ's up 97. S&P's are up 25. And so we're looking at, uh, yeah, we, we were just looking at the... Um, the head and shoulders, potential head and shoulders, uh, Tim, and the neckline. Now, where does this neckline set up again? It's, uh, I got a neckline on the chart there. It's around 4,600. 4,600. Okay, cool, man. Okay. Yeah, okay. so 46. So we're, we're a ways from it. You know, yeah. Maybe I'm putting the cart before the horse. But, you know, if, if this thing starts falling in place like I think it may, which is that the wag thrust gets to point six, then my my... My idea is that market's just going to keep going, you know, wind higher and probably, yeah. you know, to get through that uh, 4,600 on the SPX, you'll need a sign of strength, you know, so you'll need right. power to get through that. So you might see some sort of a, I don't know, explosion is the wrong word, but, uh, you know, sign of strength, you know, you need uh, to get through the neckline. So, uh, so I'm thinking the market's going to actually pick up energy as we head into year end. Right, so. because you know it's interesting, Tim. You know, you, you talked about the aspect of the percentages, you know, retracement from the last low that we had that was established out here to the low. Now we didn't even do a point three eight two retracement, which is amazing. 
You know what I mean? Oh, from that last low in October to yeah. the current low? Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. Uh, I don't know what that... I mean, I, I should have done it, but I didn't do. I didn't think about it. No, but, that's just yeah, strong. It like about I mean, it's, yeah. percent retracement or, or right. Really less. Right, right. Cool, man. So, yeah, that, that could be the halfway point of the next move up. Right. So, you know, you, it's still higher than where we are. So. Yes, big time, big time. <laughs> so, yeah. So, anyhow, it looks... It looks good, you know. The news, otherwise, you know, is pretty crappy out there. But yep. you know, the market knows what it's doing. So, you know, don't fight the market. It's an old saying. That's a fact. So, where do you want to go? We can go and uh, show you how I created that signal, or we're going to flip over to the gold market. Whatever you want to do, tell me where to go. Well, uh, got a few questions on the gold market. Let's go to chart number six. Okay. And uh, the bottom windows, it seems to really draw. The good conclusions of what the market, what this gold market kind of does, as far as the equity market is concerned. Okay. So the bottom one is a 50-day average of the uh, GDX up-down volume percent, and I went back uh, uh, 2010, and every time that market that indicator got below minus 20, I circled in red. So you got a lot of red stuff going, across, red circles going across. The last time we got the last signal came on June 15th, 2023. And when this indicator hits below uh, minus 20, the, the market uh, does either uh, goes sideways or modestly down. It can go either way. Modestly down, it doesn't like crash. It just, yes. it does go down some, but it it's, you know, so it either flips sideways or goes down some. And the average length of time, I went back and actually ran the times on all these indicators, when this got below before the actual turn up. So, anyhow, when it hits minus 20, the downtrend is done, and either the market flips sideways or goes just down modestly. When it turns up, uh, usually it's anywhere from two months to six months. Okay. And, and most of them around three to four months. But there is one in there at six months, and some are just over two months. But all of them at least went two months, most of them around three or four months, and there was one at six months. So the four-month period is October 15th, which is next week. So I'm thinking we're about in the sweet spot, as time is concerned, for this GDX to turn up. Wow. Okay. So, so okay, now, now I, I didn't do this one either, but it's on tonight's report. When it hits below minus 20, it has... In all cases, going back to 2010, this indicator at a minimum got to plus 10. Okay. So we're at so that'd be the minimum upside upside uh, target. So we're at minus as we're putting this as uh, as right now it's minus 10.41. So what, what I'm saying is when it gets above plus 10, it can go higher, but at minimum it gets a plus in before the market either peters out or keeps going higher. We don't that, know which. We'll have to wait and see when we that, get there. That's pretty cool but, to know, uh, right? Exactly. All yeah, right. it's good to know. If we get to plus ten, uh, okay. So you got to look at a bunch of other stuff, saying, well, "Is that the end of the rally, or is it going to keep going?" Right. Which some have, some haven't. But they all. So this is a safe place. So you already know that time-wise, you're running out of time to go sideways. Because the most it could do is six months. That would run into October, November. That'd be December. But most of them are three to four months. So we're in that sweet spot. So, yes. And we got minus uh, plus ten to go. So we got we got, my opinion, room to run. I guess you might say. Yeah, exactly. So, so you know, let's, let's go to one more chart. Okay. Chart seven. Yep. And we talked talked about this on the show. This is a shorter term time frame. Uh, this is. Uh, the 18-day average of the up-down volume advanced client indicator. So it takes a, it, it, all the blue area on the chart here is shows times when this indicator is above minus 10. When it's above minus 10, you're using an uptrend, and we're coming in around plus five, plus six right now. Okay. Or, excuse me, minus five, minus six. But it needs to stay above minus 10 to have the uptrend continue. What this indicator is good at doing is it shows. It does pretty good with divergences. If you notice, uh, on GDX, which is the top window, uh, we hit a low in August, then we hit a lower low in early October. Yes. Well, if you look on the indicators of both those indicators, which is the bottom two windows, both made higher lows. Right. 
And if you go back and look over the times, I marked all those times when the market was making a lower low, and these indicators were making higher lows. And they all turned out to be worthwhile bonds. And actually, same thing usually happens at tops, which is that top we had back in. I know. Yep. Um, uh, April, May period, uh, the market made a double top, and that indicator went right through the floor. And so if you're long, you should have been. So, but you know, you kind of learn that, these that, indicators that, to go that long. Top, that top was so. pretty incredible, meaning that you know what had happened, folks, is that the second run, you know, almost took out the first high swing. But yet, this indicator that Tim's talking about was saying, "Get out of the way right now," and that that's pretty about as intense as you can get, Tim. Meaning. Yeah, really cool. So, so yeah. actually, even look back in uh, 2022, uh, that that uh, May, let's see, February, be, be April high. Yes. Of 2022, so they made a higher high. Yep. And that uh, if you look at both those indicators, they made lower highs. Oh yeah, no, that's that what I'm on. I'm talking. No, I know that's amazing, man. Because particularly because when that higher high was coming in, it was coming in fast and furious, man. But yeah, guess yeah. what? Uh, the indicator was saying, see you later. Wow. Yeah, see you later. Yeah. So I, I don't know what's going to happen here. You know, this is, you know, if this run is just starting, which, you know, I've been kind of calling it way too early, but the, the indicators were, were racked. I thought we might be only two months going sideways. You know, we're, we're going on three months going sideways. And will this one stick? You know, it's about due time that it should. This rally may stick. That's right. what I'm saying. Right. Because we've got divergence and we got some stuff. And, and I remember I... I I think it was a week before or last week I bought call options because I got a few nasty emails and they're pretty good at picking bonds so I bought calls. I love and it. So they're working out for me right now. I so. love it. Well, listen, Tim, this is always a pleasure. You have a great one, a safe one. We look forward to speaking to you on Thursday, Tim. All right, thank you. Thank you. Right. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.